Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics, the Gaussian in statistics. We derive the Gaussian function within the context of statistics by throwing darts. Here, mu is our average, which in the dart case we took to be zero, but in general can be some non-zero value. That's your mean, that's your average, and sigma squared is your variance. It's a measure of the spread. The square root of sigma squared is simply sigma, and that's your standard deviation. Notice that at the standard deviation, sigma is small. That means sigma squared is small, your variance, and if you divide by a small number, you get a big number. E to the minus a big number is very, very small, you know, close to zero. So what happens in that case is your graph is very, very narrow, and you have to be very close to the mean to get some value that's away from, you know, zero. Uh, the central limit theorem in mathematics says that when you have a population and measure a sample population over and over again, your measurements tend toward the Gaussian. So let's look at the Gaussian and let's mark off here our center, which is the mean, the average, the values tend to cluster about this mean. And then when you go one standard deviation to the right and one to the left, the area under the curve is 68%. Remember for a probability distribution, the total area is one or 100%. And here we have 0.68 of the area or 68% when you round off. Then two standard deviations will give you 95% of the area and three standard deviations, see on either side, that area there is 99.7%. This is the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, which uh, some folks in social science will memorize since they use uh, these uh, Gaussians so often in measurements. Uh, consider the uh, medical profession where you may measure blood pressure or some blood test then the population will have some uh, average value where they cluster and if you say uh, normal is plus or minus one standard deviation then you'll grab 68 percent of the population and everybody else will be outside that so that means they would fail the test or be maybe in the gray area if you so define some gray area also so a medical profession uh, folks have to decide, you know, what is considered normal and what is abnormal. And if you have a sigma that is small uh, for your population, then this graph will be more peaked and narrow. If sigma is large itself, the dispersion will then be great. That's uh, the review of the Gaussian in statistics.